In this video, I introduce the idea of private data in objects in Python. And this is part of a concept in object-oriented programming called encapsulation. This is the third in a series of videos introducing objects in Python. And we'll be working on the same example that we've worked on previously. What you're looking at here, of course, is the spider IDE. And on the left side, we have the editor window. And on the right side here, we have the console. So a very quick review. We're thinking about products in a grocery store. And we've created a class product that has a variety of information that every product in a grocery store would have. In particular, we have an attribute here, the version number, which is going to be the same for every object created but we also have a collection of attributes which are dynamically created using init. There are things like the SKU, the name of the product, the brand, and so on. What we did in the last video was create a method print that will print out this information in a reasonable format. Now I have extended the definition of the product class with a new function called setPhone that I'm going to use to illustrate the idea of private data. Private data is a very important concept in object-oriented programming. Many problems occur in programs because of the side effects of various functions or code that various programmers write. So what happens is something gets changed and that change somehow messes up other parts of the program or data gets changed in a data structure and other parts of the program expect different formats. And tracking down these kinds of bugs can be extremely difficult and time consuming. So the basic idea of encapsulation is that you can have data that is private to objects. And then the only way to access or manipulate that data is through methods attached to those objects that will retrieve or set the data or whatever, but they essentially enforce various, I'll call them policies, that prevent the data from being corrupted or messed up in a sense accidentally by other parts of the program. Now I have a very simple example of this. Associated with each of our products is a manufacturer and the manufacturer, of course, is very likely to have an address and a phone number and so on. Now, the interesting thing about phone numbers is you don't want them just put in in any old format. There's lots of different ways to enter phone number. Sometimes people just enter 10 digits with absolutely no punctuation or other structuring. Sometimes people enter phone numbers in the format that I've indicated here with three digits for the area code, a hyphen, three digits for the exchange, a hyphen and then four digits for the last part of the number. And in other cases, people of course use parentheses around the area code and a space. And there are just a lot of different ways to put in a phone number. Some people might want to also add an extension. And if you allow all of these variations, then the phone numbers are going to be very, very hard to handle. So in this particular example, what I've done is create a private variable called phone number. And it's right down here in this statement. And you create private variables in Python by beginning them with two underscores. So you'll see, for example, here this says self dot underscore underscore. There are two of them there. And then the variable phone number. Now this private variable cannot be accessed from the outside of this object, so to speak. Now as a technical point, there is a way around that but Python not only makes it difficult to access these variables directly, there is a strong prohibition in the culture of using Python of trying to write to private variables from outside the object. So our basic idea here with the phone number is that we're going to have a private variable for the phone number. We're going to maintain the correct format there, which is going to be this format that's three digits for the area code, and then a hyphen, and three digits for the exchange, and four digits for the last part of the number. That's what we're going to enforce. And we're going to enforce that by allowing this private variable to be set only by using a method. And the method is setPhone. 
We're also going to have a second method called getPhone that will allow us to access the number. Now in order to save time in this video, I've obviously just copied in all of this code so that you don't have to watch me type it in slowly. And this code is available at the web location that I've indicated at the beginning of the video. But now let me go through exactly what's been done here. I define a method inside of the class product. So there's the beginning of the class product definition. We already had the private init method. Then we had a print method and now we have a set phone method. And all methods in Python automatically get as their first argument self, which is going to be a reference to the object that's being created when you use the instance creator for this class, which would be product. So we have this method set phone with self as its first argument and then phone num as its second argument. Now the very first thing we need to do is make sure that the person has put the phone number in in the correct format. So I'm going to very briefly describe how this code does this and quite frankly this is very simple way to try to do this. It's not very elegant. It's not the way you'd really do this in practice but it works in this example. So we're basically going to go through the phone number that's been put in and make sure that the first three characters are digits that the fourth character is a hyphen, that the next three are digits. We're going to make sure that the eighth character is a hyphen and that the last four characters are digits. To do that, we're going to want to have a list of digits to compare to. So I've just put the digits zero through nine as a string and put them in this variable called digits. Now I'm going to be testing for whether or not the format is bad. And I'm going to start by setting a variable which I've called bad format to false. And if the format is bad, we're going to switch it to true. So the first thing that has to be true of a valid phone number is that it has to be a character string. So I've used an if statement here to test whether or not the type of the phone number, which should be a character string, is equal to the type of a character string. And I've just put a dummy character string in here that I've made up. This is a very simple way of testing whether something has the correct type. I haven't specifically talked about if statements earlier in this series of video, but the basic idea is that you type if and then you type it a condition, and if that condition is true, then the statement that is indented here is executed. You'll notice that the if statement ends with a colon indicating to Python that a block of code is going to occur and the if statement works in that the block of code is executed only if the condition is true. So the first part of this says, is it a string? Because the phone number is not in the correct format if it's not a string. Furthermore, if it is a string, it has to have 12 digits. So I use the keyword or here, which works exactly like you would think it would and then the length of the phone number and I ask if that's not equal to 12. If either of those things is true, it's not a string or its length is not 12, bad format is set to true. So the next thing I'm going to test is whether or not the hyphens are in the right place. So the first hyphen should be in position number four here, which because Python indexes strings from zero should be at the index number three. So the next statement says if the character at index number three, the fourth character, is not equal to a hyphen, or if the character at index number seven, the eighth character, is not a hyphen, that gets this one, then we set bad format to be true. Now we're going to go through and test whether or not all of the positions marked by these X's are really digits as they should be. And so I've done this in a very simple way. As I say, the code I have here is not elegant at all, but it works for the purpose of illustration. So in Python, I can test whether a character is in a string by using the in keyword. Again, my intention here is not to teach the details about things like n right now, but just to give you the gist of how and why you might want private data and what it would mean to create special methods to write and to access 
that private data. So the basic idea here is if the character in the phone number string in the first position, which is index 0, is among those digits, which I defined up here, then this will be true. What I want to be the case is that phone numbers 0, 1, and 2, which gets the first three digits, are all digits. So I say phone num 0 in digits and phone num 1 in digits and phone num 2 in digits. This is only going to be true if all of those things are true. And then I just continue that with the fifth position, which corresponds to the first digit in this string of three. And I just keep going all the way through, connecting these statements, phone number, index number, in digits, all by the AND character. This statement inside the parentheses is going to be true only if all of those positions are in fact digits. Now I've also used the backslash here at the end of the lines to indicate to Python that the line continues. And I've talked about that in a previous video. So anyway, if all of those things are true, the phone number is in a valid format. But if they're not true, so the keyword not is here, then I should set bad format to true. Now when we get down to the next if statement, if bad format has been set to true, we print out a warning message that the phone number is in the wrong format and give a hint about the format that we expect. And then we return with a value of false. So what we're thinking here is that our function is going to return false when the format is bad and true when it's good. So we now finally get down to the place in the function where we're going to either set this private data or create it. And so we say self dot underscore underscore phone number is equal to phone num. Now what's going to happen here is if the attribute underscore underscore phone number doesn't exist, it's going to be created. And of course it will be typed as the same type as the variable that's being assigned, which is a character string. If it does exist, then phone num is going to be set into this private variable underscore underscore phone number. If we get down to this position, we know that our format is good, and so we go ahead and return true. So the method setPhone is going to be the only way that we can enter phone numbers into this object, and setPhone makes sure that those numbers have the correct format. Now, of course, in addition to writing the phone number into the object, we're also going to want to have a way of reading it out. And so we need to create another method, which is very, very simple, called getPhone. And getPhone just returns the value of the string that's in the private variable underscore underscore phone number. So what this has done is created this private variable phone number which can only be accessed by two methods. A set phone method, which creates the phone number, enforcing the rules for its format, and get phone, which reads it back out. So I'm now going to go ahead and demonstrate this code. I have put my class product definition in a cell. So you can see in line 19 here, I have pound percent percent. So I can execute this entire block, including now the definition of the two methods, by typing control enter. And if we go over here to the console, you'll see that the entire definition of the class product has been read and executed by Python. Okay, so now we want to use this example and see if it's going to work. And so I'm going to create two instances as I have before. One is milk23 and the other is serial12. And again, I've put this piece of code into a cell. So I can just click in it and do control enter and this piece of code will run. So I now have two instances defined milk 23 and serial 12. So let me just show you that I can't access 
the private variable phone number directly. It actually doesn't exist at this point, but mil23 dot underscore underscore phone number should return an error. So now for MILT23, I'm going to set the phone number of the manufacturer. And so that function was called set phone. And again, the case of the letters here matters. And I need to put in a phone number. So I'm going to begin with a phone number that is the correct format. So just make one up here. It's got to be a string, 305-798-2300. And if I hit enter now, you'll see that this function returns true, which means that the format was correct. So there is now a value in the private variable phone number, but I still can't access it. So there's an attribute error when I try to access it. I can, however, read it out with the getPhone method. So if I do milk23 getPhone, and that takes no arguments, what's going to happen inside the product class definition, though, is that getPhone is really getting this argument self, which, of course, is what it uses to read out the private value of the phone number. And so I hit enter, and sure enough, the phone number comes out. So now let's see what happens if I try to assign a phone number in an incorrect format. Let's use serial 12 this time just to make sure that you know it works. So if I do set phone and a string, and of course another common format would be something like this, and then a space. Just making a phone number up, so don't call it. Now if I hit enter, I get the warning message that the wrong number format was used and a prompt as to what format I should use and my function returns false. So now I'm going to go ahead for serial 12 and set a phone number that is the correct format. And again, I'm just going to make it up. I'll use the same number as before. And this will return true, saying that it worked. And now I can reference it in serial 12 by saying get phone with no arguments. So what I have shown you in this video is the idea of private data. Private data is an attribute whose name begins with hyphen hyphen. And when you use private data, how you then have to create methods for accessing this private data. This is a very, very important idea, as I said earlier, because this ensures that this data is only accessed and only written in the correct way, and it is a very major strategy for preventing all kinds of bugs that result from side effects that occur when you're writing code in a traditional non-object oriented fashion. This is called encapsulation. So part of any object oriented computer language is the idea of encapsulation. And it's called encapsulation because you're essentially putting a capsule or a barrier around this private data that's associated with an object. I also want to point out that you can define private functions as well as private data. Private functions are functions that only can be used by methods that belong to the object. I'm not going to give you an example of that. You can go to the documentation, read about it if you like. I think it's actually very straightforward. But I did want to show you this very important idea of private data and encapsulation.